to my channel. I'm Dave Wright, and this is the first video of the channel. Well, at least I hope it will be. Uh, this is the first time I've taken the adventure bike out with cameras, trying to see if I can actually make a video. I've done videos in the past, but never where I had to talk to the camera. And uh, it's a lot more difficult than I thought it would be. And I'm sure there's some YouTubers watching this just laughing right now. I'm like, see, see? Uh, <laughs> But hopefully this will come out. Hopefully the audio will come out. Hopefully I'll have the lighting right and the camera angles. Uh, I'm not a photographer, or so I don't really know what I'm doing. But I'm just kind of wing it. I was inspired by a couple people 40 times around and as a magpie flies. And th those sort of adventure bike um, uh channels have been been giving me at least that's got my inspiration from to say you know I gotta try that but like I said it's a lot harder than it looks what I'm gonna try to do is uh, take out on the adventure bike I have a BMW GS 1200 and find places to go disperse camping try to stay in Northern California probably the, on the Sierra Nevadas but the thing I'd like to show is uh, is how to cook actually how to how to actually eat well while you're on the trail or, or out um, uh, camping off the bike it's funny I, I was camping in Yosemite just recently on the bike and um, I guess you know when you're on these kind of motorcycles everybody who has one is instantly your friend which is fantastic but I noticed that they were eating like gorp you know good old raisins and peanuts or uh, a cliff bar and it, it's not bad I mean I like cliff bars. I probably wouldn't want more than one a week, maybe. I have a lot of water and some turkey with me, but there are some things you can do to plan just a little bit ahead of time to cook really well uh, while you're on the bike. So today, um, well, <laughs> already off to an interesting start. I'd planned for a few hours to get here, and it wound up taking me almost six hours to get here. So uh, <laughs> more than yeah, more than twice the the time that I anticipated for me to get get out here. Uh, it was a little sketchy on some of them. I'm not going to lie. It was a little sketchy on some of the roads down here. But uh, that's the fun of it, isn't it? And anyway, so I'm here. Uh, we're at a place called Sandbar Flats. And uh, it's um, the middle fork of the Stanislaus, I believe. I think it's right over there. So I just got here. I'm going to unpack, set my tent up, um, and probably walk down and you know put my fishing pole together and walk down and uh, check out and see if it gets a little fishing in before it gets dark. Well, it looks like the sun's starting to go down a little bit. Um, I did a little fishing, wasn't too, wasn't too successful. So I guess we're not having fish tonight, but we're gonna have Brussels sprouts and mashed potatoes. Well, we'll see, see how it comes out. So anyway, let's get started. I think uh, this is kind of cool. This is a, um, I guess it's called a twig stove, maybe? But uh, you, you put, you can gather up twigs and put them in here. And sort of feed them in this end uh, or in the hole here and, and get it going. We're not going to do that today. Um, it is kind of windy though, so see if this works. I brought just a small spirit stove this time. It's a little platform that goes in here. And uh, let's see if we can get that to go in there. There we go. We'll get that going. Um, before we do that, it sits in there like that. And that'll be our stove. Brussels sprouts going. Here's the Brussels sprouts. Now I brought, um, I guess this is about a pound and a half, I think, the bags. So I have about maybe a little less than half, about half, probably about half. So we'll cut these up. As a kid, I never liked Brussels sprouts. And as an adult, uh, you know, I just kind of shy away from like, well, I don't live here anymore. I don't need to eat Brussels sprouts. I'm not making Brussels sprouts. But what was funny was I was at a restaurant one time. I think it was like a steakhouse. And I accidentally ordered Brussels sprouts. They weren't called Brussels sprouts. I think it was some other fancy name. And they showed up and I was like, oh, no. <laughs> uh, but I decided to eat them anyway. And um, they were absolutely delicious. And I, and I was like, what happened? How did I miss out on these? What what was it that the Brussels sprouts were so bad when I was a kid? And I talked to other people. I was like, do you, do you like Brussels sprouts? Like, no. And I think I know why. I think because they're part of the cabbage family, 
that people thought the way you cooked them was you boiled them, boiled them to death. And uh, they were just gross, just totally gross. So anyway, this restaurant, the steakhouse I was at, had them and they were, of course, grilled. And they had like Parmesan cheese on them and, and all kinds of good stuff. I think there was bake, even bacon bits inside there. It was so good, so good. And uh, ever since then, I was like, okay, I, I guess give Brussels sprouts another try. But definitely the trick is to, um, is to grill them, I think. And I guess Brussels sprouts come in different... I've, I've heard that they have uh, red Brussels sprouts. I like to find those in some time. I don't, I've never really seen those in the grocery store. I guess there might be a regional thing. I'm not sure. But we're going to cut these up and uh, put them in the pan here. Sometimes the leaves fall off. And that's okay. Just throw the leaves in there too. They'll, they'll get all crispy and, and grilled up as well. When I was looking, uh, looking at getting these Brussels sprouts, I just... I was kind of researching them a little bit and trying to learn some more about, about Brussels sprouts. And it turns out, I mean, I figured Brussels sprouts were probably, you know, Northern Europe from Brussels. Maybe that's where they got the name. That's what I was guessing anyway. I was right there. But it turns out that Brussels sprouts uh, showed up in Northern Europe uh, in about the 5th century. I'm not exactly sure how they know that. Um, maybe I guess there's some records or, I mean, I don't know what they would be. And probably not recipes for Brussels sprouts, but at any rate, the supposedly they showed up uh, Northern Europe, um, fifth century, and that's how they got their name, Brussels, right, right there in Brussels. So I, was, I guess that was a good guess. But I guess later they were brought uh, in into France, and you know, it's, of course, France is right there, and the French in the 18th century brought them into Louisiana and what's funny is I just got back from Louisiana I went to Louisiana for the first time I've never been there before went there was there for a week as pretty long time got to see all the touristy things and some non touristy things which was good but the food was absolutely amazing in Louisiana it was just so so good and I think and I'm not sure if it's because it's just it was new to me and I hadn't, you know, hadn't been eating, eating that food for a while. So I wasn't used to it, I guess I should say. But it was just absolutely amazing. So anyway, so the French, when they had the French colonies, brought Brussels sprouts over to Louisiana. And then, of course, um, the, they, they started, you know, people started to plant them and cultivate them. And I think we might have enough here. I think I have too many to fit in the pan there. Looks like I'm kind of getting enough. Uh, a, little, a couple more. I'll do a couple more in there. So, in the uh, in the 1920s or 40s around there, I guess, Brussels sprouts had made their way to California. And uh, um, and specifically in the northern, in the, well, I would say northern coast, I guess northern California coast, probably not north coast. My, people might get offended by that. But uh, so I'm from the Bay Area, California Bay Area. And so not too far from Monterey and Santa Cruz. And that's where uh, they, they tend to grow today. And, and in part, uh, one of those things that those two areas or those regions have um, I mean, they actually go all the way up to like San Mateo, which is uh, almost more like a city, but it's on the coast, and so it's like a lot of fog. And the harvest season, I guess, is in you know early summer ish. I'm I'm guessing, but the coastal fog and the terrain and the cool temperatures um, make it ideal for growing there. Butter. That's what I need. Uh, there we go. That's the mashed potatoes we're going to use later. Put that down. I'm looking for where is it? Gee. Okay, so, you know, part of being on a motorcycle is that uh, you don't have refrigeration. So you have to sort of substitute or, or find things that don't need a lot of refrigeration or just don't need any refrigeration. So this is ghee. It's um, clarified butter. And in the rest of the world, I guess, well, maybe India and other parts, uh, this is commonly used. Uh, there's a, quite a few health benefits they, they say they get from it. But 
I think um, probably the reason is because it doesn't require a lot of refrigeration. I think that's probably why. So I've got some here. We're going to cook the Brussels sprouts in that. Let's get our stove going. Hopefully it's not too windy uh, in here for this, for this guy. lit too much trouble there we go that was easy now I know I'm gonna have to use the simmer ring so I'm gonna get that ready let's just heat this up for now let's see if we can get it going Hopefully there won't be too much wind there. Where's our butter? I need a spoon here. So the idea is that we'll grill them and get this going. Hopefully, like I said, if we don't run into too many wind issues. There we go. Maybe I can block some of that wind until we get the get it really going. It takes a while for the spirit stove to really catch on. It's got to heat up enough and there's little jets inside there and it, uh, when it heats up enough it vaporizes the fumes and well you'll see. Oh, there it goes. Did you hear that? These are starting to be, look like they're almost done. Let's flip them over and see how they look. Oh, those are starting to look good. You know, I thought I was going to have to use a simmer ring, but I think that there's just enough breeze out here that's uh, keeping me from having to have to use the um, simmer ring. Oh, I got, I got a little bit of a flame going on there, don't I? Uh, let's see if we can get these guys to cook up a little bit more. And then I have like a balsamic glaze, which I'm going to put on these. But I think I'm going to put them in a the bowl first because I'm going to make mashed potatoes in the same same pan, I think. That does look good. Okay. Let's put these in here. Oh, that looks delicious. Either water or vodka. I guess we'll find out here shortly. Oh yeah, I think it's water. There we go. Let's get that going. We're gonna use that for the mashed potatoes. I could have. I'm just getting lazy. I could have put it in a pan, but decided not to. Now, get this. Put some some glaze on it. There we go. And let that stay warm inside there. These little rubber pans. Pots seem to work pretty good for keeping things warm. Put that aside. Hopefully, we can get this thing going to a boil pretty quick. Looks like the potatoes are almost done. I think they are done. Yeah, they're done. These mashed potatoes look good. Let's get those on there. on this trip, that's for sure. Okay. That table. See our Brussels sprout. Oh yeah, there they are. Let's see how they are doing. Look at that. I think I'm going to put a little more glaze on them. There we 
go. Uh, what do you think of that? Not too bad, huh? For camping off the, cooking off the motorcycle. Anyway, I'm going to enjoy this and uh, I'll talk to you guys a little later.